Well hello everyone and welcome back here to Sunless Sea. I had to make a decision. Things weren't going particularly well with the save I made. And to be totally honest with you, I'd had that save for quite a while. And we've gone all the way through the pre-alpha stuff. It's getting a bit buggy. I'd had to send it off to uh, Val Better Games to fix it at least once. It just wasn't working right. So I decided to make a decision in order to celebrate the fact that this is now a full release game we're going to go and start a new character so three decades ago in the reign of victoria london was stolen by bats now it lies a mile below the surface it was dreadfully inconvenient for everyone but it opened a vast black ocean to you welcome the Undersea. Okay, so we now lodge in a room above the Blind Helmsman. Who were we? Now we're a captain. Now you belong to the Undersea. But who were you before? We can be a street urchin. Your urchin gang cast you out when you grew too tall. You took to sea rather than graduate to larger crimes. That last big score was enough to buy a ship. Gives a bonus to vows. We could be a poet. Educated and articulate. You seek sensation at sea. How lucky you had a legacy to spend. Your long vanished father had a rich patron, it seems. This gives us a bonus to pages. A veteran of the campaign of 68. What that was doesn't really matter. You fought in the invasion of hell. London's armies lost. You survived. Your loot and your pension have bought you a command. This is a bonus to iron. An ordained priest. You fell from grace. There is nothing left to shore for you. An anonymous benefactor has found his way out for you. Perhaps at Z, you can overcome your appetites. This gives a bonus to hearts. And we can be a natural philosopher. Your computer theories on time, blood and starlight brought you down to the neath the cavern where London lies. And now they take you out to Z. This will give us a bonus to mirrors, which is the skill of detection and perception. Of the uh, the lot of them, I'm leaning towards national natural philosopher. I've done that one before, though. Um, hmm. I think I'm going to go with a street urchin this time. So... Your friend, another Longshanks, knows a little of gunnery. Only a little, but she can help. We now have one times Longshanks gunner. We gain 25 vows to a total of 50. We have 10 echo to a total of 60. We were a street urchin, now we're a sea captain. And our strange equality has gone. So, what uh, does winning mean to us? Your father's bones. Your father was lost at Z. You never knew him, but you've often dreamed of him. Find and return his remains to London for a decent burial. Fulfillment. Gather a hundred tales. Learn all you can of the Z. Write a masterpiece. Retire. Wealth. You know how it is to be poor. Now you want a mansion, servants, fine clothes, a family perhaps, or a private kingdom. Establish a colony where you're the absolute ruler. A utopia, perhaps. Perhaps. Right, we can't do the private kingdom one. And I think, to be totally honest with you, I want to go with your father's bones. Seems like something a sea urchin might dream of doing. Finding where his father died. Learning why he ended up on the streets. Find where he fell and bring him home. When you found your father's bones, you can retire to victory. Explore Fallen in London to find your first clue. Okay, so right, we now have something to do before we even leave the port, which is excellent. Okay. Captain, Captain, an irregularity in the harbour master's office. They wish to know what term of address do you prefer ashore? Madam, sir. Citizen, my lord, my lady, Captain. Mm. Captain, let's be boring. 
Okay, so, last piece of advice, explore. Take chances. This captain will probably die. The Z is hungry. But each captain passes on lessons to the next. So, how shall we look? How shall we look? Something with a bit of sea urchin about them. Nope. 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 Mm, possibly. That one. There we go. <sighs> ah, okay. Thoughts for names. Thoughts for names. I should have thought about this before I got to this point, really, shouldn't I? What should we call this character? Moving the microphone so I can get to the keyboard. Well, we could call him Bob. Let's not. We could call him Damien, but I don't like that idea. Mm. Let's have, let's go over a real British name and let's tip the cat locks before we start. Henry Hutchinson. Smythe, which is a real street urchin name. Can you imagine a street urchin with a name like that? You get beaten up within about 30 seconds. Uh, well, perhaps they just called him Bob. Meet with Slivy, the urchin who speaks to the wind. The urchins of London lair in the flit, a creaking roof maze high above the streets. A bad altitude, as everyone knows. Slivy hears things. Slivy knows things. A week ago he mentioned that your father was as strong a swimmer as you. Let's go and find out, shall we? Slivy's face is disfigured by a wine-stained birthmark, and he struggles with a stutter. Marks of the lightning's kiss one night when he got too bold in a storm, they say. Y yes, I've been waiting for you. I just wants me a little mutter salt, something to calm me tongue. Bring it, and I'll tell you who has your father. So we can go, we go north to Wither and bring back mutter salt for Slivy. Okay, so we have a task. What else should we do? What else should we do? What else should we do? Let's have a quick look at our lodgings. Not that much has changed in this, apart from the ability to build a study, which we can't do until we upgrade anyway. Um, we don't actually need to do uh, to rest. We can't afford a townhouse. We can't. Let's read the morning paper. The Echo Bazaar, that enigmatic marketplace, has increased its tax on love stories. The traitor empress has forbidden singing in the street outside a palace. The anarchists of the calendar council have inexplicably dynamited a drinking factory, a drinking fountain. The Ministry of Public Decency has located and destroyed a nest of nail-biter wasps. So that's given us some recent news, which we can possibly trade later on. Let's have a look at our officers. So we've gained um, a gunnery officer who is going to uh, give us iron plus one, which is a little bit of a bonus. And of course we got squeakers back. I should imagine I'm going to end up changing him out quite quickly. So we've got um, some memoirs, our objective. Okay, so our objective is to find our father's bones and then retire. The next step in that is to get some matter salt. And we're almost safe, whatever that may mean. Okay, right. Let's have a look. We've got ten fuel, five food, no terror. Can't really afford anything. So I think what we're going to do is we're just going to set sail. And let's see if we can actually find some mutter salt. Though, actually, first of all, before we go into London, um, passage for a tomb colonist seems like a, a good idea. Um, 
An emigrate will pay to be taken north to Bendavite. So let's take that. So we now have a tomb colonist. So that's going to make us a little bit of money on the way up. And... That seems like all we want to do at this point. So let's make a start, shall we? It'd be interesting to see what we can do with this. Actually, there is one thing we can do. Let's speak to her. All right, we can spend a secret for iron. That's good. And oh, we can proposition the long shanks gunner. And we can have a romance with her. Interesting. All right, let's just see what she. Why did she come to Z? It's like a flit at Z, right? No one to tell you what to say or do, and no one to kick you downstairs just because you've got a bit at all. I'll be a faithful officer, but put me ashore at the Shadow, and I won't forget you. Khan's Shadow is east of the Karnak proper. So, right, there's a, a, a storyline around this girl. That's interesting. Okay. Right. Let's head north and see what we find. See how long we survive. Send a bat out, why not? Okay. Hunter's Keep is some distance to the northeast. In fact, that's not a bad place to go to first, really, is it? So let's head up there and see what we see. We discovered Hunter's Keep. We cannot yet see it. Where are we on the map? Hunter's Keep there. Okay. Tell you what, let's cut a... Oh, actually, let's just go north, actually. Looking, that's very close. Feels slightly different location to beforehand. I do get the feeling with the final release, they moved some things around. Not that that's really a problem. There's the dock. Uh, we've used two fuel already. Okay, so we're going to dock in Hunter's Keep and go through that little bit of storyline. Just pick that one up again. And then we'll carry on north and see what we can see and see if it's bats. Though I don't think it will. There don't seem to be as many bats as there were. Okay. A hump of dark rock swathed in mist like a hundred other under the islands. But there's a grand house, windows aglow, lawns impossibly green and lush in the full starlight, raked gravel paths. You stand on the dock as the sea nudges the ship aside. An unexpectedly warm breeze carries the faintest trace of lavender. So we can present ourselves at the house, we can walk in the gardens, we can reconnoitre the island, or we can spy on the house. So let's reconnoitre the island. Ships ready come here, nothing changes, even the weather. The house is the heart of the island, the house and the sisters. But the Admiralty may be happy to know that nothing's changed, at least. Right, well that's uh, another five echoes when we get into the, um, when we get back to London. Spy on the house. You peer through a half-open French window into a grand parlour. Grand in styles, if a little reduced in style by dust and neglect. A dark-haired, pale-skinned young woman bends earnestly over a piano keyboard. Another, fair-haired but unmistakably her sister, sprawls on the sofa with a book. A third sits by the fireplace, staring sorrowfully into the embers. Soon, she says, and the piano music falters and stops. We'll go hungry, and then the end will come. For me, but not for you. The pianist raises her eyes from the keyboard. Hush! If we don't speak of it. She frowns. Has she seen you at the window? You withdraw. So we've gained 40 fragments. We know something of Hunter's Keep. And we've succeeded in a Veil's Challenge. 
present yourself at the house. They would have heard you, your ship come in. Why hide? A maid with smouldering topaz eyes shows you into the parlour where three young women wait. A visitor, the youngest cries. The next youngest chuckles, the eldest sighs. Do excuse the indecorum, she says. Visitors are rare. You are very welcome. I am Cynthia. The noisy one is Phoebe, and the cheerful one is Lucy. You're in good time for lunch. Will you join us? So we're now acquainted with the sisters of Hunter's Keep. So, let's start with the top. Cynthia is the eldest. Melancholy, pensive, occasionally dramatic. Cynthia grasps your arm and whispers to you. Her eyes are wide and blue. Her hair is wild and tangled. Bats might nest in it. It seems that you are sitting on a hillside above a wide blue lake, listening to a story of a murder. An axe, a net, blood on scented water. Another chop? Cynthia asks. You've barely touched your food. Here, I'll have the maid wrap something up for you. You can't be hungry. It's not safe to be hungry. Right, so we've lost uh, the hunger we picked up. We're acquainted with the sisters. An occurrence. Your gods of the sea salt's attention quality is now gone. That's probably worth remembering. Okay, so we now have a tale of terror and we now have one wary ex-terror. Okay, that's probably... Okay, I don't want to give up the news, just to come back and have dinner with another one of them just yet. So, that's perhaps not, and let's move on, shall we? Okay, and let's just, just have a quick look at the map again. Um, yeah, we'll head sort of northwestish up to the coast. See what it takes us, see what we learn. We'll hug the coast on the way back, perhaps, if we have enough uh, fuel. I'm getting a touch worried about the fuel. That seems to be going going down rather fast. But uh, let's make the most of the fact that we're not actually terrified just yet. To go out into the dark a little bit and explore. Dust echoes. Even a sepia tint in the air. These are the waters around the tomb colonies. Well, it looks like we're heading the right way. But we survived. And we have our first kill. The ship is yours. What will you do with her? Loot and scuttle her. She's a vile old vessel. And these Zs aren't safe. Take what you can and move on. Right, we have a cache of curiosities. Shake out the fabric and let it glimmer in the light. You find spider silk in London, of course. There are troubles with the sorrow spider infestation like anywhere in the Neath. But for real quality, you need to go east to the Carnet or to the fang bristling fastness of Saviour Rocks. So we've got a bolt of spider silk, which actually means we're going to make a bit of money out of this journey, which is excellent. We've gained a secret. Speak to your office to improve your abilities. We may as well. Let's just do that straight away. So. I didn't mean to unassign you. I meant to speak to you. There we go. Okay, so speaking, spending a secret will improve your iron, but no higher than 50. Let's do it. So we gained an iron to 26, which means we're going to do a bit more damage. Excellent. Let's get the rest of the way into Vendabite. 
and we will see where we go from there. A soft wind from the east. The impossible scent of pine. This would be rather surprising to find that here, wouldn't it? Right, here we are back at Vendor Bites. Seems like a while since I've been here last. But we our journey is not really finished yet. We need to go further north. What's worrying me is the fact that we seem to have run out of fuel. We've probably got enough to get back, but not much more. So let's see what we can buy here. The trouble with tomb colonists. You brought this decaying emigrant north. Now what? Your tomb colonist passenger yanks off her bandages. She looks remarkably healthy for a tomb colonist. I'm not as dead as I look, she confesses. And I won't get ashore without your help. Yes, the constables are looking for me back home. Is that a problem? Uh, this... Oh, I see. Yeah, okay, so the top one's to help out. We can drop her off at the dock as promised. And after that, it's her problem. Um... Okay, this seems to be a bit badly written, really. Let's do the top one. You slip your furtive passenger past the skin check post and the confirmation of consolation. Thanks, Captain, she remarks casually. Let me teach you a couple of tricks, just in case you do this again. And here's a little hush money. So we now have one times menaces suspicion. We've lost a tomb colonist. We've gained 200 echo. We bought a criminal to Vendabite and assisted her. And we've gained a veil. So, okay, that was quite profitable, I would say. All right, so let's have a run through Vendabite. Um, the last tour operator, which we can't do yet because we need 12 supplies, apparently. Um, ho, oh, Captain, I have one dozen sad and bandaged souls here. They are choosing their final fate. Will you take them on one last diversionary tour? It may be a longish trip. Make sure you have enough supplies. So, it will replace 12 supplies with 12 tomb colonists who we will need to take to three destinations of the Untersee. Um, okay, well, I th I'd like to do that. We won't do it straight away. Gather gossip. Along the coast of the Untersee, it's remarkably hard to die. The decrepit and nearly dead who leave London become tomb colonists and settle here in bandaged peace. But they don't give up their ties to home or their politics. You gather a haul of complex clues, enough to keep your contacts in London interested. So that's another report report for us. Um, dusty grass of wine, which will reduce terror. We don't need to do that. We have hardly any. We can explore Vendabite. We can visit the first curator. Let's do that. Let's pick that story up early. Z Captains, the first curator gives audience. The first curator is responsible for the preservation of the tomb colonies. It is it's been, it has been here much longer than London, like all the oldest tomb colonies. But even the tomb colonies dissolve in the end. Its time is close. No more light, the obsequious steward cautions you. The curator is terribly afraid of moths. He opens the door and you step into near darkness. A pair of luminous lamp lighter bees buzz in a lattice ivory tube. There is no other source of light. A bandaged shape, no larger than the child, lies crumpled on a couch. It lifts its head with obvious effort. It takes several seconds for you to distinguish its voice from the soft buzz of the bees. Let's listen to his whispered request. Sea Captain, soft silk skin, not much left of me. I will go into the Grand Sanatorium. Bring me colors, seven colors, pay. Well, Cosmogone, Irigone, Pelagin, 
Steward has list. Find them here and there across the wide black Z. Okay. All right, so we can ask about the Grand Sanatorium. Oh, Silkskin, you don't want to know. The chuckling becomes a cough. We don't die here below, not unless we go to Z. So we need something else, somewhere to end. Let's accept the commission. It collapses, rustling back on the, to the couch. Even the effort of speaking seems to have diminished it a little. The audience is over. As the door opens, it shrinks from the finger of light that reaches across the floor. Outside, the speaker of Stuart Stuart nods. The book, yes, the book. He hands you a slim, illustrated volume. The curator is old, old as dust. We will be grateful if you would do him this one last favour. So, right, we have a, a number of pages from the Neath Bow. And we need to find, I believe, an object with this colour. And once we have them all, we've completed the quest. So, we visited the first creator. We can't do the last tour operator. We don't want to dusk out a glass of vine. Let's explore Vendabite. A raggedy fella. Captain, I'm a good Zeman. I'm yours if you'll have me. Will you have me? I'm hungry. I'll work hard. He seems, likely enough, if a little ragged and sorrowful. Let's take him with us. All the way back to the ship, he talks excitedly about the Zeman craft. You start paying attention when he mentions navigational tricks you hadn't come across. With luck, he'll work as hard as he talks. So we gained a crewman. We've gained one bales. That's nice. I'm almost up at full capacity, which is great. Okay, I think I'm going to leave it there. I uh, need to make a decision whether to buy some fuel, which is actually be quite expensive, or go back to London and stock up a bit more. Oh, let's sell our recent news. There we go. That's giving us a bit more money. Um, possibly head back to London and resupply because I've got a bit of money now. Uh, but next episode, we're going to go and try and find that Matasalt. So until then, I have been Simon Parsons. This has been Sun the Sea. Thank you and good night.